Happy Homebrew Wednesday, folks. Ryan here. Thought maybe we'd try out the cream ale. Uh, I bottled this just last week, uh, last Tuesday. Um, this is Northern Brewer cream ale. Hasn't even, it was only, hasn't been in secondary. It was just two weeks in primary and then straight to the bottle. So let's take a look. Sorry, I got a frosted glass again. Didn't have any clean ones that were. You know, warm. Let's pour that in. Try to get a little, try to get a little head out of it. Oh, smells good. It's got a little bit of a head. Let's pour it a little more aggressively. Oh, ooh. Has a little bit of a sweetness to it. Still young, you know, just a week in the bottle, so. Hasn't had time to mature too much yet. Probably next week it'll taste a bit different. My experience in the past is that this is, this is a good beer to give someone who hasn't had a lot of craft brew, you know, your light friends, uh, your macro friends, I guess you may call them. I don't know. Ones you don't know a good beer with good flavor. Now this is a good beer. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying this is a good way to get them into it. You know, because they'll taste and go, "Ooh, that's beer." So it's good as a little taste. Yeah, still has a little sweetness to it. I'm sure that'll go away. But I mean, this is one that you you could really drink. You know, mow the lawn. I don't mow the lawn. I rent. So, but if I did mow the lawn, I'd enjoy a couple of these afterwards and during. Nah, that'd probably be a bad idea. You know, you do about a quarter of the lawn, drink a brewski or two, and then you don't finish. So this was the second recipe that I had ever done when I started brewing last year. I remember after drinking the caribou slobber brown ale, which is supposed to be a moose jewel clone, I believe. Um, I tried this one and went, oh, this is not good. I don't like this. Well, the brown ale and this cream ale are very different tasting beers. And I'd gotten so used to that other beer that when I got to this one, it was just like, eh. But I've had the opportunity to brew a few more beers since then, so I'm used to having a lot of different choices now. It's just a really good beer. You know, it has a lot of good flavor to it. It's not overly bitter. It smells like beer. <laughs> nah, that doesn't really help much. Hopefully most beer smells like beer. But it's amazing how tastes change because even even after I had gotten used to drinking this one, once Caribou Slobber had run out last year, I had the White House Honey Ale. And at first I hated it first few bottles I was just uh uh because it got it was back to a more a uh, little bit bigger beer I mean it's not a it's not really a big beer but it's bigger than what this was had a lot more flavor to it and you know there's some more hops it's not it wasn't it's not really a bitter beer but it's a really good one sorry if it looks like I'm squinting the sun's actually right there and it's, while it's not super bright it's still really light out here as compared to what I'm normally on camera But look at it, it has a really nice color. If I had my phone on me, I'd light it up, but it's not clear. Um, there's no secondary, so I didn't really have an opportunity to clear up. But, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I mean, it looked clear in the bottle before I put it in the fridge, which I find that's the case with a lot of the beers. 
Um, uh, some of them. I did try to put Irish moss in it. I think it's probably a waste of time. I think at some point I'm just going to stop doing that. Um, Oral Flock, I think, does work better. But I don't want to pay for it because I'm a cheap ass. Irish moss is fairly cheap. Um, it's the same $2 bottle I bought last year. Still using it. It's probably halfway gone. Maybe a quarter of it left. So I decided to come outside because it was a beautiful day today. People are doing things. <laughs> Just, you know, I'm wearing a jacket, so it was at 1.70. I'm not sure what it is now. It's probably probably back to the low 60s. It's been it's just been so darn cold here. Huh, 68. <coughs> um, I think after this, I may go pour a caribou slobber. Let me take a look at that. That one came out real carbonated. Uh, well, not super carbonated, but it carbonated a lot more than I was expecting. Um, I didn't put that one secondary either. I did Northern Brewers recommendation of if you don't have a secondary, which I did. Um, well, I might not have at the time. But anyway, I decided to do it the same way I did when I first made it last year because I really liked it. I just did three weeks in primary. Which Northern Brewer says that if you don't have a secondary, add another week on a primary and just bottle it. You'll be fine. So I decided I wasn't. I was just going to do that and it came, you know it came out good it's definitely a different taste it's been a while since I've had it um I haven't tried it since it's been two weeks <sighs> I think the last one I had well I had I had some Sunday night but it probably had been a week and a half at the time that it had been bottled I just I put the pig in the fridge last night because I figured I didn't I was afraid that it was going to keep carbonating which I hope it does, and I hope it stops, because it's, it's perfect. I mean, you're not pouring and getting a little bit of beer at the bottom and then that much head. I mean, you're getting about that much head on it, you know, if they poured it. If you're a little more careful, it's not as much. Um, it is just an all-around good beer. One of my friends... So when he first made it, he said he got the faint taste of buttered toast, which I've never, I've never gotten that. But it is really good. Um, I, I would say for this style of beer, I'd say this one or uh, the speckled heifer Northern Brewer has. I think they consider kind of a cream ale, something hybrid, I don't know what. That one's a partial mash, by the way. Probably two very good beers of this style, I think. Um, I've been wanting to try the Brewer's Best American Cream Ale. It doesn't come with specialty grains. In fact, it uses corn sugar. I think it's meant to be a lighter bodied beer than what the, even this is. I mean, this had some specialty grains with it. Um... So I tricked my dad. Well, I didn't trick him, but he, he, he was interested in it. So I got him to get it because I figured it would be a good one. So I'll just have to try some of his. And he'll try some of this. We can do a beer trade. <laughs> um, man, I really hope the audio is coming good on this. I got my snowball outside. Um, and my laptop. So sorry, the quality... Camera won't be as great this week. Ugh. It's a lot of debate over secondaries too on whether you should have them or not. And one of the videos I watched once made a really good point, and I don't think they were, they weren't trying to make a point, but they, they kind of did. Um, it's actually Coopers, and then they're advertising their DIY kit. You know, where you get the ferment, you get a fermenter, the bottles, you get one uh, thing of pre hop stuff. I think you get the brew enhancer and the little carb tabs too. Mm. <sighs> Excuse me. Ooh. See, good beer. And uh, they they don't really have you do a secondary. I mean, there's something in that kit that you that's kind of weird compared to what you do to other things. 
because their fermenter has a crowd what they call a Krausen ring that you take out after some amount of time. I wouldn't consider that really a secondary, but what did they say? If I remember correctly, they said something like, oh, put it in your bottles to secondary it or something like that. And I was like, wait a second. Well, really? Yeah, that makes sense, I guess, because all your yeast is going to settle the bottom anyway. You're probably going to have more yeast, maybe, if it didn't settle out in the primary at all. But, yeah, I, I could see, I could consider bottling a form of secondary. Maybe not the best form, but if you're someone, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I try sometimes all secondary just because, of, like, uh, the PSA IPA, which I bottled, finally bottled Sunday. Um, I think that used Windsor yeast, um, that was a mess inside that fermenter. I mean, I put it on the counter, and I thought about bottling it, and just stuff was floating around everywhere, and it's, which, you know, a cloudy beer's not bad, but when you got chunks of stuff floating around, I don't want to drink it. I mean, I want to taste the beer. I don't want to taste the yeast, but I'm like this where it's cloudy or whatever. That's fine. I'm not real picky on that. Oh, man, that's so good. Um, I'll be right back. I'm going to go get a caribou slobber, and we'll talk about that. You won't see me pour it, but I'll get out here quick. So a little bit of a problem here. Poured this out of the pig. All foam. I mean, it was foam all the way to the bottom. There's some pressure in there. Uh, I poured it out a couple times, thinking, oh, I just need to relieve a little bit of it or something. I don't know. I've never had a beer come out of the pig like this. You know, I've made the caribou slaughter before, but it got carbonated. I'm a little concerned. I'm hoping it's not infected. Didn't really have any strange smells to it. Um, my dad had a problem with his getting over carbonated like this. Although he said that in his party pig air, there kept he kept seeing air going in there or something, where the pressure wasn't stay or there was always pressure, but he said that he saw like an air bubble or something, which shouldn't happen in these. Because everything that's displaced should be displaced by the pressure pouch that's inside the pig. I didn't really see anything like that. So, I'm hoping everything's okay. It's kind of weird when you're talking and then people are sort of walk around outside. Um, and it looks good there. Uh, I don't know. I'm also wondering too. The first time I made it, I uh, I think I got the wrong yeast. So I'm wondering. I think it's Windsor yeast that comes with this, and I'm wondering if that has something to do with it. If it, I don't know. I, mean, I, I really don't know. I'm, I was not expecting this. Honestly, with my dad, I thought something went wrong. It was kind of, you know, first first or second beer he'd ever done. And maybe he just missed something, but I don't know. I'm a little concerned about this. I mean, it is, going, it is turning back to beer, but that, that is a thick foam on there. And if I can't get any of my beers out, it's, it's going to bad. It's going to go fast because I may not end up drinking very much of it, which would be unfortunate if I have to sit and wait for 20 minutes to have a glass of beer hopefully the bottles will be okay I'll have to pour a bottle put a bottle in the fridge tonight and pour it tomorrow and see what happens like I said, it smells fine Get a little hand of you know yeast you know, and if it was that Windsor yeast too, and not putting in secondary, and there's just a lot more of it still floating around there, and it went nuts on the sugar, maybe that, maybe that's part. Of it. Maybe I really needed to put. Maybe I got lucky the first time, and where their Northern Brewer's suggestion was right on. And this time, that was just a bad idea. <laughs> so 
time. I, I'm fairly sure I did not have Windsor yeast the first time. And it didn't, you know, I wasn't bothered by it or anything. <clears throat> it just, it was different. I think it was like SO4. I'm fairly sure I got SO4 or something like that the first time. I'm going to try to take a drink here. It tastes exactly like I'd expect to taste, though. Has a little bit of bitterness to it. Kind of get a hint of something coffee-ish, but not quite. Maybe a little chocolate tone to it. I know that concerns me, but I guess there's not much I can do about it now. If there is any damage, the damage has been done. I don't want to believe that that was infected. Oh, it just smells yeasty. A little, I mean, not really yeasty, but you just get the hint of it. So my next video project may well, I don't know if I'll call it video project, but I will be doing a homebrew video. Um, got a Cooper's Dark Ale kit. I don't know if I'm going to do anything special. I've seen about just going, doing it. We're going to do exactly the way Cooper's mentioned to do it. Minus their kit. So I'll use, it, it came with the pre-hopped uh, LME. Came with the brew enhancer, I believe it was one. Which is a mix of maltodextrin and dextrose. And little Cooper's carbonation tab things. A little, little piece of sugary candy. Thinking I'm just gonna go straight with it. Um, haven't really been able to find too many videos on YouTube about how it tastes. There's one person on there, but I hate his videos. I shouldn't say that, but he's not really on YouTube anymore, and I'm kind of glad. Um, so I think that's all I got for you this week. Um, have a happy homebrew Wednesday. Remember, pour yourself a cold one. Cheers, 17. See you later.